So now that we've talked about the reasons why you might think you're having problems with wheat or gluten, now it's time to share with you my seven tips on how you can become friends with wheat and gluten-containing grains in general and make them a part of your healthy diet because I do think they can be very nutritious and very healthy for you if you do it right. I use these seven tips for myself to start eating grains and really enjoy them and have no problems with them after a quick paleo diet and I've been very successful so I thought I'd share them with you and see if they can help you too. So first of all, and I keep repeating that, but number one tip is always, always, always make sure you prepare your grains properly. It's so important because grains have anti-nutrients such as phytic acid um, that can really bind to all those beneficial minerals in the grains and other foods that you're eating and take them out of your body. So you always need to soak your grains, whether it's oats or rice or... Um, wheat or anything else, you always need to soak it, ferment it, sprout it, um, do sourdough. It's going to make sure that your grains are healthy for you and very, very nutritious. My number two tip is something I touched on very, very briefly just a while ago, is make sure you buy your grains organic. Because if, if they're organic, you can be sure they don't have any Roundup or any kind of chemical residue in them. And at least you know that those things are not going to cause any kind of allergic reactions. And if you still react to them, then, then you can for sure say that it's the grains itself, themselves and not the chemicals in them. It's really worth paying just a little bit more for your own health. And at the end of the day, grains are actually one of the healthiest food items you can buy and one of the cheapest ones as well. So why not pay a bit more and invest in your health? My tip number three is go for whole grains all the time to get all the nutrients from them. There's so much better for you. You know, throw away that white flour and use whole grains, um, whole grain flour. It, you can use it for pretty much anything. If you soak it and ferment it, everything you cook with it is going to be just as soft as using white flour. So there's really no reason to be afraid of using it. And it's even better if you can grind your flour by yourself just before cooking. You will definitely preserve all the nutrients because if you use prepackaged flour, it loses a lot of the nutrients, so if you can do it yourself at home, it will be even better. Tip number four is try to reestablish your healthy gut flora to help your body digest grains and all the other foods. By My best way to do it is just by eating a lot of fermented foods and also by trying to understand what your body is sensitive to, what kind of foods your body is sensitive to and limiting them or avoiding them to make it easier for your body. And Another way to do it is by avoiding anything processed, including white flour, and of course limiting sugar as much as possible, or, or even giving it up not to feed the bad guys such as candida and you know bad bacteria and all those things. My tip number five is find out what you're really sensitive to instead of guessing blindly. And there are so many different ways to do it. Um, and the first, the most well-known way is to do an elimination diet, which is not very easy and it takes a lot of time but it's so, so valuable. An elimination diet is really just giving up all of the main, um, all of the foods that are known for causing problems, such as dairy, such as gluten or wheat or you know, grains in general, uh, nightshades and, and sugar and, and all the eggs and, and all of those things for at least 30 days. And then after that, you can reintroduce them one by one um, for a week or so and see if any of your bad symptoms resurface or if you feel worse. And that's really the best way to do it. Another way is Dr. Cocker's uh, pulse test. And this is my favorite way. I've learned so much about myself recently from this method. And I'll definitely make a video talking about it more because I think it's awesome. You can find out so easily what exactly is causing stress to your body. And I cannot stress how good this method is. It's amazing. And then the third way, of course, is all kinds of blood tests and saliva tests and skin tests for allergies. But they're expensive and they don't always show allergies correctly. They might miss some and they might show some that you don't actually have and then you might limiting you might be limiting your diet too much. So it's not always best to do it. So I'd say it's always best to go for the free methods that are actually the best ones, um, such as Dr. Cocker's method or elimination diet and just take control into your own hands. My tip number six, yeah, number six is try not to overeat and not to mix a lot of different foods because it's just hard on your digestion and overeating is definitely taxing your system so much you know if you eat a huge pizza with all these different toppings it's going to be pretty difficult for your body to digest so 
make it easier for it and just eat smaller portions and don't mix too many different things. It's also easier to understand what you're sensitive to when you have just, you know, three or four ingredients instead of 10 different ones. And my final tip is, of course, try to prepare as much of your food at home as possible. For one simple reason, you will know exactly what's inside and you'll be able to select ingredients to the best quality for yourself and the most nutrition. You, know, you can never be sure what's inside the foods in the restaurant or in the supermarket. Um, but if you make them yourself, you're going to know for sure that the ingredients are really good, really good quality and you know what's inside. So it's definitely the best way to go. So these are all the tips I want to share with you today. And I hope that you enjoyed um, hearing about my experience with the gluten-free challenge. And I hope that my tips will help you. If you think you're suffering from gluten sensitivity or wheat sensitivity, please let me know in the comments. I'd love to hear from you and just to know what kind of um, symptoms you're going through, what kind of problems you're going through. Um, but I really hope that this video is going to help you. And now that my wheat and gluten-free challenge is over, I am about to start, actually I've already started another challenge and it's going to be my dairy free challenge and I'm not putting any number of days on it because if I find that it works then I'll just keep doing it forever. And this was inspired by the Cocker's, Dr. Cocker's pulse test which I mentioned earlier on which showed that I have a sensitivity to dairy product so I'm willing to give it a try and see if it's going to take my health and my skin health to another level. I hope that it will. I'm really hopeful. So let's see how that goes. I'll keep you posted. So I really hope that this video is going to help you and I hope that you enjoyed listening to my story. If you're new to this channel, then welcome to the family. I hope that you'll subscribe to see more videos. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in my next video. Bye!